So we're going to continue um, our look at shear capacity of steel members uh, with this example here. Uh, with this example, we have uh, a rather um, tall and skinny eye section. Um, so this would be a, a built-up section, and we're, we're given uh, the moment of inertia for that section um, that's grade 300 steel, and that the yield stress is 300 MPa. And what we need to do is determine the um, shear capacity of the section, uh, assuming that the web is unstiffened. So um, in, in doing that, well, let's just sort of uh, start off with our, uh, essentially our governing equation for uh, shear capacity, uh, which will be V star has to be less than or equal to uh, phi V sub V, and we'll just uh, start a little reference column over here on the side, and this reference will come from NZS 3404 5.11.1. And um, we, we've also got from table 3.3, .3, we have phi equals 0 0.9. So we need to find this V sub V, and this V sub V is going to be dependent upon um, one, the slenderness ratio of the web, and then two, uh, what the shear stress distribution is across that web, um, whether it is, uh, um, you know, uniform or non-uniform. So, um, in determining the slenderness, we need to look at the slenderness limit. So, if we go to 3404, and we look at the, um, uh, basically shear capacity of a stocky web with uniform, so it's this, uh, this web limit here is d sub p over tw has to be, you know, we need to figure out if it's uh, greater than or equal to 82 over fy times 250. We can move this fy over 250 to the other side of the equation. That makes it uh, have sort of a similar form to, you know, when we're looking at uh, our slenderness limits for, um, you know, flanges when we're doing uh, you know, our local buckling check for the um, for bending uh, so that that's what we'll do so um, you know so our, our first step is to you know, check the slenderness so our slenderness ratio DP over T sub W, it's just going to be the the clear depth of the section. So it's going to be the full height uh, minus the flanges, and it's really we're looking at the um, the area over which it will buckle. Um, so that equals uh, 1,540 millimeters uh, minus two times 20 millimeters, which will give us you know the the depth of both the flanges. That's our D sub P, and then our thickness T sub W is uh, 10 millimeters. So that gives us a slenderness ratio of 150. Um, so we'll, we'll just even write it back down here just so it's uh, even clearer, 150. So um, we need to look at, uh, you know, whether this uh, section will buckle or not before it reaches uh, the full plastic uh, capacity so that it yields over the entire depth. And, you know, this is a, a good moment to just kind of uh, sit back and have a, um, uh, a, a bit of a look and a bit of a reality check. And, I mean, given how tall and uh, thin it is, we would expect it to undergo buckling um, uh, when it's loaded up. And so we just need to, when we do this uh, check uh, our slenderness ratio, we, we need to make sure that we're um, going to be, um, you know, we sort of keep that in mind as, as sort of a, a check and make sure our calculations make sense. So um, the stocky web limit Uh, so that stocky web limit is going to be d sub p over t w less than or equal to 
82 over FY over 250. Um, and this is just coming straight out of the standard. And that's 3404, um, 5.11.2.2. So that's, that's what we just looked up um, over here. So this is our uh, our stocky web standard um so let's see where where we sit uh, in between here and you know you kind of by inspection we'd expect that we're uh, going to be uh, above this limit so that we're going to have a more slender element but we we need to sort of uh, uh, contend with this uh, fy over 250 and see what that gives us in terms of a um, uh, a ratio so You know, if we have 82 over Fy equals 82 over uh, 310 divided by 250. Um, and all of that equals 7.18. So um, we have, you know, would, this is clearly um, much bigger than that. So, you know, D of P over TW equal 150 uh, is greater than 82 over 310 equal to 7.18. Um, therefore, The web is slender. Um, so that that's sort of the first part of what we uh, need to find when we're doing these um, uh, these shear checks. So we want to find out whether the uh, section is likely to uh, buckle or not. Um, the other part, which is important, is what the uh, shear stress distribution is, and if um, the shear stress distribution is uh, uniform, uh, we use one set of equations. Uh, essentially, um, we're just going to be using the uh, area of the web uh, multiplied by the uh, yield stress of the web. Um, and if it's non-uniform, well, we, we essentially modify that, uh, that shear stress that we use for the uniform. So if we go uh, back to our standard, and we'll see you know, shear capacity for a web uh, with uniform shear stress distribution. Um, one of the cases is a web or a channel um, that has uh, the shear force parallel to the web member. And uh, that's exactly what we have <clears throat> um, here in this case. And so, uh, you know, if we think about our, um, uh, our, our, our shear flow uh, going through here and what the shear stress distribution looks like on that, you know, we would have... I'll just draw our uh, our section here. Um, we would have a, a shear stress, a shear flow, uh, which would be <clears throat> uh, linear on the flanges, and then this uh, amount and this amount. So the shears have to be uh, equal at the joint to keep equilibrium. And we would have a, a shear distribution that looks something like this for force there. So this is approximately uniform. So um, we'll also go uniform shear stress. distribution. Well, now we, we know that we've got a uniform shear stress. We have a slender web. Um, it is really uh, just going to be a matter of uh, selecting the correct, um, uh, basically, um, equations that we need, uh, which, which take for this, uh, this state. 
So if we um, if we go back to our um, uh, our code here, and we look up, so if we have uh, shear capacity uh, with uniform shear stress, um, and this is going to be for um, so it's 11.2. Well, what we want to find out, here we are, this is when we have shear buckling, so when we use V sub B. So shear stress capacity, um, if we sort of come back up here, um, wow, well, sorry, we'll, we'll roll back, but um, for an unstiffened web, which is what we have, and um, if we have a uniform shear stress distribution, well, this is going to be essentially the governing equation uh, that we use for our um, uh, our capacity. So, uh, where you know for uniform shear stress plus. Slender web. V star has to be less than or equal to phi. V sub b, and you can think of this V sub b as um, as the buckling, and V sub b uh, equals alpha v v sub w. Uh, v sub w uh, simply equals zero point six times Fy times Aw and we can uh, we can come back to our uh, capacities over here and you can see uh, this is V sub B alpha V uh, V sub W and um, you can see what V sub W is here and so this is simply just this is the shear stress um, at, uh, at yield, the 0 0.6 times Fy, uh, and that just comes straight out of uh, von Mies' failure criterion. And the A sub W is just the uh, gross area of the web. Um, this alpha V factor is really just uh, a factor which is looking at how close our slenderness ratio is uh, to the limit, and it's reducing down the capacity um, uh, proportionally um, uh, so that, you know, it's essentially saying, you know, t um, for this V sub B um, that you should take uh, the, you know, you know, what the capacity would be if the entire web were to yield and then we throw on this factor which says, oh, well, it's not going to get there because it will buckle before that. So let's just work through um, that equation really quick. So uh, let's get V sub W here. So V sub W equals 0 0.6 times um, 310 MPA. Um, our area of the web, well, we knew it was 1,400, uh, 1,540 millimeters tall. Uh, and then we subtract off uh, the two flanges and it's 10 millimeters thick. And let's just divide by um, 1,000 newtons per kilonewton just to get us in kilonewtons here. Uh, then we find out that V sub W equals 2,790 kilonewtons. Um, again, it's always good to have uh, sort of a does this make sense point and and it kind of does I mean you know we've got a really large area of the web so we would expect um, that sort of you know gross capacity of the web if this whole thing were to yield um, and it's that you know shear stress so that yield stress times the area is going to be what your uh, equivalent shear uh, capacity is that's the the internal force which can uh, resist the external action uh, yeah we would expect it to be uh, quite large um, just and so but the well while I'm here let me just put in a um, five dot 
4.1. And so, um, but because we're going to, because it's a slender web, um, we know it's going to buckle before we, we reach this full capacity. So we need to look at what this alpha V factor is. And this is essentially a reduction factor, which accounts for that buckling. So if alpha V equals um, 82 over d of P, TW, FY, over 250, and remember that's uh, the yield stress of the web, all of that uh, square root, and this whole thing squared, and that's just coming from NZS 3404. Um, and section 5.11.5.1. All right, well now this is kind of just a, a plug in numbers and, and find out what this alpha V equals. Um, that's just going to be 82 over 1540 minus two times 20. That's just uh, the, the clear distance of our web. Uh, so we're just total height minus the flanges over uh, 10 millimeters, which is just the thickness of the web. Um, the yield stress of that web is 310 MPa, and we divide by 250, and that's because all of these, when all of these slender limits were um, sort of developed, and because they account for things like residual stress, um, the typical steel grade was 250. So this is really just a correction factor um, for um, sort of previous uh, uh, eras of steel. Uh, from when these, these limits were originally set. So if we work all of that out, we get alpha V equals 0 0.241. Um, and this is, a, this is sort of, again, a, sort of a pause and ponder moment here where if um, V sub B is just really the, you know, the total shear capacity of the entire element, uh, entire web yields multiplied by this reduction factor for buckling. Well, this reduction factor is, is pretty significant. It means that we can only take a quarter of the capacity of if this entire uh, section were to yield. And, you know, that makes intuitive sense, too, because given how uh, tall and uh, narrow this is, it's a very slender web, and so we would expect it to, uh, to buckle and, and actually buckle quite early uh, in its loading. So uh, now that we have this, let's just uh, work out what our capacity is. So uh, V sub V equals phi V sub B, uh, and that equals phi times alpha B times V sub W, uh, that is 0 0.9 times 0 0.241. Uh, times 2,790. And so if we work all of that out, we get 5 V sub V equals uh, 605 kilonewtons. So, um, in a, you know, it, it not a, uh, this is what, you know, hopefully would sort of uh, informative example here. It's, it's not a terribly difficult one. Um, and this is because the, the shear capacity, determining shear capacity um, using these design equations really isn't that challenging. It just gets a little bit confusing because uh, you've got all of these subscripts and the like, and then you've got, uh, you sort of need a flow chart to, to determine, you know, you know, what do we do, uh, whether something is slender or stocky or uniform or non-uniform, but essentially what we, the whole process is you determine um, whether the uh, web, uh, which is resisting that shear, whether it is slender or stocky, and that's just based upon uh, where it sits relative to this uh, stocky web limit. Um, and then after that, you determine what the shear stress distribution is, and that's just purely coming uh, straight out of structural mechanics. 
Um, the, uh, the standard also has a list of, of particular types of um, section geometries which uh, would give uniform or non-uniform shear stress. And then it's just uh, really a matter of looking up, you know, for those conditions, uh, what are your uh, various uh, equations which you need to do. And they're all for these unstiffened webs. It's all based upon uh, this V sub W, uh, which is just the uh, shear stress at yield. So this is uh, essentially tau Y uh, times the area of the web. Um, if it's a stocky limit, it's just this. Um, and then if you're going to buckle, um, well, we put on this factor alpha V, uh, which is just looking at how close uh, the um, slenderness limits that you have uh, for your, your web are to this slenderness limit ratio. Uh, and then that's just applied as a reduction factor. So I hope you found that um, informative and, and helpful. And um, I want to thank you for watching.